It's a divisive subject, it is. <laughs> On a more serious note, vaccines mm. are a very yeah. divisive subject, and I wanted to bring this up with you um, because it's something that we've both covered for probably years now, I think. Mm. And what's happening in Kitchener-Waterloo, are, is there a Waterloo in England? There is. Okay, yep. so bo- two, two places that are both originated from England. Over 18,000 students are go- looking to be suspended because they don't have up-to-date vaccine records. The number was 32,000 a couple months ago, and they put in vaccine clinics in schools, and they opened the vaccine clinics for longer hours in order to get children up-to-date. And that's not necessarily the problem, Lewis, but what I see here, and as we'll read along, is that there is going to be a lot more hesitancy that people have based on the language that they use and also the fact that you can see what vaccinations they have and are requiring students to catch up on. I read into this a little bit more today, and they need there's 20 vaccines Canadian students need up until the age of, I think it was 17, and there there's 24 different times you're 24 different like um times when you're supposed to get it so if you're under six months you get these ones uh, another vaccine you might need to get every three years so fo- so on and so forth and they're all state paid for but mm. these are the vaccines that they're saying that the children aren't up to date with so that would be routine shots for measles mumps rubella diphtheria which is a fecal matter illness tetanus it's nothing funny about that polio uh, meningococcal, which is meningitis, pertussis, the whooping cough, and also interestingly enough, chicken pox, which I definitely didn't get as a kid. Did guess. you get? Yeah, exactly. I got chicken pox on spring break in grade 11, which was terrible, or grade 10. So I had a week off and realized I had stuff all over my skin. It mm. wasn't just food. It was chicken pox. So... Like, even since we've been in school, they appear to have added at least a couple here. Am I right? Well, I mean, is it any wonder that this, uh, this, I don't know, hesitancy has declined? I mean, especially in a place like Canada, I can imagine, where your, your government essentially shut down everything and treated everyone like second-class citizens who wouldn't take the mRNA. So, of course, people are going to be hesitant to vaccinate their kids like um, uh, like post COVID-19 lockdowns, post COVID-19 uh, Trudeau, Turdo, um, <laughs> you know, mandates and everything like that. You know, I think it's I think it's a, a, a parent's right if they don't want to vaccinate their kids um, for, for what reason. That's completely up to the parents. Um, but it's showing it's showing how much the people, especially in Canada, like with this story, it's showing how much people are sick and tired of being told what to do. Um, and especially the state interfering with, with this sort of thing. Now, in terms of those shots, I mean, I had, when I was a kid, I had polio, uh, the polio shot. I think I had measles. Um, and I, I've, I was originally a flight attendant, so I had to get all sorts of jabs like um, hepatitis B and, you know, all these travel injections. Um, so I'm not I'm not uh, like a quote unquote true anti-vaxxer, as they say. You've got to have nothing in you. <laughs> um, but I understand the hesitancy. You know, the past three years have been really tough for a lot of people, especially Canadians. Um, it's been tough everywhere, but, you know, Canada has been hitting it really hard from there so-called liberal government which is supposed to stand up for freedom by definition but didn't do that so yeah so what's interesting about this they are saying there is hesitancy but also that you know through lockdown people weren't exactly going and getting their vaccine pamphlets or documentation um Mm -hmm. updated so it's a combination of both not having updates and not actually getting the the vaccines but what i found most interesting and what i think would be the most off-putting to people would be the language that they are using because as Mm -hmm. soon as you hear what these people said you'll think hey this is exactly what they said for another thing Mm -hmm. and it says dr hugh su li wang said vaccines are necessary to stop the spread of serious and preventable disease that's a partial quote from the press release which 
essentially said that in full and then goes on to say children who are not vaccinated are at increased risk of getting infections and spreading disease to others. The enforcement of the Immunization of School Pupils Act is critical for ensuring the health and well-being of our community. That is almost word for word, Lewis, exactly the same as what we heard in 2020 through 2022. And yeah. to, you know, YouTube guidelines as they dictate this, these are the same verbs that they used uh, when they were trying to give you the jello pudding uh, inoculation <laughs> of 2020. It's uh, it's necessary to prevent the spread of serious diseases. Um, you are at an increased risk of spreading disease to others if you don't take it. The enforcement is required for ensuring the health and well-being of our communities. So the same language you're using here for all these different vaccines is the same language they used for, you know, the jello pudding injection that didn't work, the jello that didn't stop the spread of more jello, Lewis, mm -hmm. and the jello pudding that you didn't actually need. Well, obviously, and now um <laughs> what I find funny is is this idea of oh, you know, if if you get uh, if you <laughs> it's it's the same language like you put, but also your kid must get vaccinated in order to protect others. It's like, well, hang on a minute. I thought that if your kid gets the injection that they'll be protected. So you're only putting your own child at risk, right? It's not putting other kids at risk in that respect. So I don't understand. This is the same lines as, as COVID again, where it's like you have to get your mRNA shot to save your grandma. And it's like... <laughs> Right. Well, yeah. they, they're not creative at all. This is from a month no. ago, like I mentioned, 32,000 students. And if you're a firm believer in this, you might want to let your constituents know or the people that are employed by you know, like, hey, change up your language a bit. David Aoki, not a DJ, Director of Infectious Diseases <laughs> and Chief Nursing Officer for Public Health, he said almost the exact same thing a month ago. Different guy, exact same thing. We're working closely with local school boards and community partners to reach as many families as possible. I prior our priority is to keep kids safe, healthy, and in school. Vaccination protects kids and keeps schools healthy by stopping the spread. Like, he's literally reading this off of somewhere, or copied and pasted, obviously. Children who are not vaccinated are at an increased risk of getting infections. We can go back to the other one. You know, his, uh, um, his brother, he... Steve Aoki, just comes in and pies <laughs> an unvaccinated kids. There's the the same line in that one. Yeah. yeah. Going back and forth. Though. And so they had, you know, all these students unvaccinated and they went and they started putting vaccine clinics in their schools and still they can't get them to do it. So what I was mentioning the other day when I talked about this was that this sort of thing is going to start pushing even more parents towards yeah. alternative uh, school districts, private school, homeschooling, etc. And it's weird to me. Well, it's not weird to me. It It's surprising to me that Canada, who had a vaccination rate of over 90% for the full dosage, there's still this much hesitancy. These 32,000 students had a couple months. It's down to 18,000 now. They have till, I think it was March 27th to do this before they start getting suspended. That's a lot of people and a lot of vaccines to get if you aren't up to date on all of them. I think there's going to be, I hope there's going to be some sort of questioning. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, you shouldn't get a measles one. I have no idea. I can tell you that you don't probably need a chicken pox one. Probably not. But I think that there needs to be questioning around this sort of stuff because again there's already this hesitancy around believing health officials and what do they respond with they don't respond with saying hey you know it's your choice we just can't have we just can't risk you having in uh, your kid in school if you don't do it and they don't say you know uh, we recommend this strongly but you might be opening your kid up to infections no they don't do that they say let's use the exact same wording cut and paste that we used two years ago that people you know, pretty much had a big problem with across the board. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So any wonder that people are becoming more hesitant, like I said originally, you know, and all powers to the parents at the end of the day. I mean, if I, I can't, I can't make a decision on what a parent decides to do in terms of that. That's it. That's a very gray area for me because I believe that the parents should have full autonomy over their over their child, of course, not the state. 
that's like a big fundamental um of course that doesn't mean that you know a parents uh, a parent should um of course go too far with that in in that respect so of course if they're abusing their child then of course that's when um the the authority should step in uh, for something like that but of course when it comes to health uh, autonomy health um autonomy for their children that's a serious subject so with that being said i'd say more power to the parents and you know if they can homeschool then then do yeah or some sort of uh community based schooling i'd imagine that's how a lot of this stuff started back in the day mm-hmm. hey you've got 10 kids i've got 10 ginger irish kids too uh let's put them together and get nanny sue sue ellen if she's british to to come take care of them and teach them stuff i think there needs to be a shift back to that if you can afford a private school that's not going to teach your kids garbage you should probably do that otherwise you should probably let my brother and his wife homeschool your kids they got 10 kids anyways what's a few more um yeah because i I think originally the the homeschooling stuff was all like a very hippie type thing and it was sort of taking kids out of compulsory learning and trying to completely get them off grid but now i think i think the evangelical christians took over and uh made it so actually no we don't like what's being taught in school so we're just gonna teach our kids you know mostly about the christian doctrine and uh what follows from that and you know remove remove certain compulsory uh well not compulsory but certain academics from uh the learning for example things like uh hyper sex education that we've been seeing for the past few years and i think home homeschooling has only grown throughout the west um as time goes on and it's and i think it's exploded f- since like three years ago now so um yeah i mean i'm for it if you could afford it do it lewis brackpool school of english breakfasts turn it up jordan